Howdy. Hello there. Uh, we are going to get started with this uh, miasmic malignifier, a term that I will probably mess up uh, many, many times over the course of the evening, over the course of several streams as I get through this. Uh, it's not too massive um, relative to the uh, Night Tyrant, uh, but it's pretty big. It's definitely not... Uh, definitely bigger than that um, so I as you can see I primed it uh, I hit it with uh, Wraith Bone and then uh, hit these smokestacks some chaos black uh, I wasn't too worried about getting some sort of down fade going on because I'm gonna grind the daylights out of it this thing is supposed to belch out all manner of plague and disgusting stuff so I'm gonna make sure it does that um, I also sprayed right in there uh, the main reason, um, even though there's like a little bit of, I guess, reverse Zenithal method going on with it being dark from on top, uh, the main reason is actually to just get the insides of these primed black so that I, I will have to get some dark paint in there, but I don't want to be messing around. Ow, that hurts. Um, I don't want to be messing around with that all that much. And especially in there, yeah, I could have left the door off if I was smart, but I got excited. Um, you know, don't expect me to paint everything in parts every single time. Uh, I did consider leaving it off the base, um, but after I put it on there in the last stream a few times, just, just dry fitting it, eh, it worked. I can get in there. I can get in all of those spots. Um, a lot of really cool uh, features on it. Um, the uh, All of the kiln ceramic work, so it's really nice texture to it. Um, so I think I'm going to end up dry brushing at some step. All of this tubing has got weird, gutsy, gross, drippy stuff. That's awesome. It's got tons of like straight up death metal, painful spikes on it. Uh, really cool slashed up metal. Uh, it's got this like intestinal garbage in there. Um, it's got lots of stuff on the ground, and there's lots of details that, um, unless you really look close, uh, are tough to spot. Like this little gutter grate thing here. It's just full of tiny little baby maggots. I'll probably put some of my special magnets or magnets maggots in there uh, as well. You've got these other auxiliary smokestacks, which are very very cool. There's lots of tiny flies on it. Uh, so most of what I'm going to do to get started is just get the base colors down so I can get a feel, so I can start to see where this thing is going. Um, and you know, if I look at the box. I don't think I'm going to do anything knock my whole desk around uh, to avant-garde with it I should just scooch out of the way buddy I'm gonna hurt myself on this model so many times I love it now that these spikes are out they're all out at angles that you like while it's in your hand you're gonna turn it and get jabbed up um, but if you look at what's on the box uh, I am gonna do something in sort of this like tannish color um, what I'm gonna start with is Rackarth flesh um, but as you can see I've got all these little boils to do I've got this gloop I'm going to try Gilliman Flesh. Well, it's interesting how they did that. It is a mixture of metallic tubes um, and intestinal things. Um, so I'll probably use Gilliman Flesh over here, maybe. Uh, no, actually, I'll use Bugman's Glow there. Um, I will probably use Gilliman Flesh because I want these separate smokestacks that are on the sides. Um, there's actually three of them on there. One of them's hidden behind here. Um, I want those to have sort of a different color to them. And then one of the other cool bits, uh, there's tons of metal work. So I'll do all the spike stuff in like lead belcher or some other iron-like uh, color. Just set that there. Um, but then I separately primed these boys, which are these little bells and sensors sensors um, that hang off of these hooks and I will glue these on because uh, I'm really scared about packing the thing up and moving it um, maybe I shouldn't maybe I just won't uh, we'll see we'll see how it holds up um, you know what now that I see <laughs> I love it when you try something and then it makes the decision for you now that I can see how nicely that swings on there I probably will keep them separate uh, I'll just get like a tiny little box that I store with this um, that's not really deep enough. I was hoping maybe that went deep enough where I could keep them under there, but I can't. I'll figure something out. But now that I see them swinging on there, that's pretty cool. Uh, this model 
really interesting has a lot of of very cool parts where i don't remember how expensive this was but it was not cheap you know a big model uh fearsome opponent on the battlefield i don't think anyone really likes this thing in the current meta at all but uh, it has really cool stuff that uh, I wish I had known, or I wish if I can find one of these secondhand, even already built, I'm absolutely picking one up. So one of the things that I found was that, and I eventually put it on here, but one of these pipes, uh, this one back here, if I hadn't if I hadn't attached it, man, it would have fit like a smokestack on one of these two rings off the back of my tyrant. How sick would that be? Um, you know, make the thing look like it's it's rolling coals, big old honking uh nurgle smokestack it has all of these hook barb things uh these are all separate pieces that that you attach on these ones sadly aren't um all of these intestiny pipey things these are all separate pieces they're really really cool um i'm not gonna buy a second one of these just to cannibalize it but i did think about it the whole time i even thought about cannibalizing it just for these, like hang a few sensors off of off of that guy, or a bell on one side. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna keep an eye out if I can find this model, um, even if it's kind of beat up. Find it secondhand. Uh, that would be that would be dope because it's got a lot of interesting parts that you can reuse elsewhere. And I've got kit bashing on the brain because um, one of my upcoming projects is going to be doing three chaos lords, not in Terminator armor. Um, and I have models for those, but I'm going to more Death Guardify them. Uh, so I bought two. I'll add some Death Guard parts to those two. And the third one I'm just going to do from, from scratch kit bash parts. And I'm going to learn to use green stuff because all I've ever done is once. Oh, that's actually set pretty good. I've done one little noodle. Uh, so I do want to get into kit bashing. Anyway, I will start getting underway because I'm probably boring the daylights out of anyone stuck watching this thing. Uh, we're going to start with Rakarth Flesh, and we're going to go on all of the major pottery parts. So this main stack, not the side ones, and these three big orbs. There is, uh, if you look at the front of the box, a separate little kiln dealy that you build. I haven't built it yet. Uh, I don't even think you're allowed to use it uh, in tenth their picture on the whatever data slate-ish card thing doesn't even have it in there it's like this poor lonely guy that got forgotten um but i might cannibalize that for some stuff um but we'll see anyway we will get this rocking and underway i've got a big honking brush i don't know if i'm going to stick with it but this is a big piece so uh what i'm going to go with as a basis, Rakarth Flesh, as I said, it's going to be, I think, in theory, a little bit darker than uh, than what's on the box, but I am going to dry brush it uh, with, I think, Rack White um, in the hopes that, I mean, obviously, I'm eventually going to wash it in a bunch of grime, but the hope is that um, it'll bring out a lot of this texture. Yeah, that's, that's a pretty... I'm not terribly worried if I hit the metalwork right now. I'm going to go over all of this ringed metalwork with uh, Warplock Bronze because I love it. So if I hit some of it, eh, it's okay. I'm going to get up on there. I'm actually going to end up dry brushing on this and probably hitting some of the metal by accident before I paint it metally. Um, so we've got a lot of real estate to cover. Um, from here, color looks pretty good. As always, how you prime it, that stuff does, does soak through. I gotta be super careful when I turn this bad boy. Um, it is it is showing through, which is absolutely fine. If it's darker on top, that sort of fits with the whole smokestack aesthetic. And I'm just filling this whole thing in. Doesn't have to be too, too thick. The, the texture is really interesting on the model itself. It really gives a lot back. Like there is no, you would have to put so much paint on this thing to get it to look like a, a flat mat. It's good. This is a this is a fun model to build. I did last night. 
lots of interesting stuff. It has more options than it lets on in the instructions. Um, if you pick this guy up, there are steps you can omit, uh, which I found out just based off of the pictures on the box art. Um, where you choose to put these things, these side smokestacks, obviously you can, and it's free country, you can choose whatever you want. Uh, but one of the pictures on the box underneath the spigot area, it's got a, the triple circle Nurgle thing with some flies on it. You can just choose to leave this whole thing off and just have that symbol there. And it's actually like that in one of the pictures, uh, right on the back of the box. Um, so it's got, it's got some neat options. If you really did want to cannibalize this bad boy, um, you could get away with making the majority of it, but leaving some of these spikes off, leaving some of these off. Um, uh, even the stuff underneath where these tubes are attached. Um, if you leave them unattached was a very good example. There is one example left. This hole right here, this gutter with the little maggots in it, uh, is exactly very similar to where this stuff feeds in and where this tube feeds in. So if you felt like keeping the tube for something else, you still it's not just blank and flat underneath. You don't need to fill it with anything. It's just got a little cool gutter. So, yeah, this is the most awkward model to hold, though. I'm not worried about breaking it. I'm just worried about breaking the skin. It's always weird. I don't really want to bleed on screen. Bleed for my art. There we go. And if you are new to this, I am absolutely wetting my paints down. I don't want to kill the texture on this. I'm using a wet palette, um, which I highly advise. But if you don't have one, you're just working off of a plastic palette. Um, based on sort of the size of your brush, you get some paint in the spot that you're going to be drawing from. And you just dip your brush into the water a little bit. Uh, a lot of people wonder, like, how thin is too thin? Um, I don't have a scientific way for doing it, but. Uh, but if I start painting and I am totally losing texture or I can see a bunch of ridging from the paint, then there's not enough water in it. Uh, and if it's running super thin and not even sticking, you know, against itself, it's probably too much water. Um, you can do multiple coats. So I try to lean a little bit on the thin side, um, which isn't 100% wise for me because a lot of times I'm, I say I'll do a second coat, and then I don't. I'm like, yeah, I'm cool with it. Um, but it's better than going too thick, is the point. You can always do a second coat. You, you can but shouldn't try to undo a singular thick coat. That's no bueno. You just end up losing too much detail on the model itself. Like this right now, as I'm spinning it around, and I'm on my third sort of rung of the ladder. I can already see that it's drying up here. I can still see the primer through it, which is cool, uh, because I'm getting that natural gradient. because I primed in two different colors. Um, as with every model, this phase always scares me. It never looks good. It used to horrify me, but now I have enough faith in the process where I just see it through. But it just looks caked on and, and juvenile early. Um, because you haven't done much with it. Washes are going to be very important. Uh, highlights are going to be very important. And fear is the mind killer. So you should just stick with the task at hand. Trust in the process. But every time I get the heebie-jeebies right about now, it still very much looks like I am putting paint on a model, which yes, that is what I'm doing. But there's no magic right now, not really. No magic yet. The most horrifying phase. I am quite pleased with my Night Tyrant. Yeah, I will keep worrying, working on it a little bit, but I'm not going to bore everyone with three-minute streams as I get a 
stroke of madness. I'm like, oh, add more rust to this spot. Uh, this thing does have boils all over it. I'm just, I'm not too worried about missing them. They're going to get some bright color on them no matter what. Um, and they are kind of fleshy. So I might as well just get this, uh, what did I say it was? Rackarth flesh as a first pass, as a base. It'll work. Um, I can go with something darker, which in this case could be Bugman's, um, around the edge so that they sort of get this like inflamed look and then the middles get something other. The box it uses yellow and I'm not opposed to that. Um, but I'll think about it. I got a little ways to go before I gotta worry about that. The boils are big too. It's a honking big set of boils. So much fun, so much body horror, so much. Do you like body horror? Death Guard is for you. I don't even like body horror that much like in other media, but this line of business, painting stuff, it's the funnest. All these pleasant boobos. Just get all up in there. I do like this color. Rackarth flesh works really nice. It's got a very simple clay-like thing going on. I think it'll work well. Uh, obviously, it's no accident that I'm picking one of the flesh colors as a base because it's got fleshy components to it. All of those boils are going to sit nicely on a base of flesh color and then how we choose to contrast that is what's going to make it interesting there's also big honking skulls on it things super metal um, those guys are going to get my matching treatment that I've used on my other models of probably Wraithbone and Seraphim Sepia that's my jam my skulls and my light armor lighter colored armor get the same thing and it it sort of brings the army together people shoulder guard pauldrony things get it so your models don't have to be identical color scheme but if you pick a couple neat elements then you can uh you can get them to match enough you know my typhus has a greener deeper green and everybody else, my tally man, I gave sort of a dusty finish to him. I intentionally caked on a ton of uh, Wraithbone primer so that it was like really soaked up paint. And get it in the shot. There we go. Grab some more paint. Poof. But everyone gets at least some amount of AK dark slimy green one whatever it's called, and everybody gets some amount, I guess even more consistently, everyone only gets the Wraithbone Ser Seraphim Sepia treatment somewhere. My, uh, my Poxwalkers got it on all their horns, all those spiky horns that they get, I give them that treatment too. So you can keep everyone from looking identical, they do belong and that they look like they belong in the same team. Oh, these are huge boils. I love it. These guys are so gross. And precariously close. Combat patrol. I didn't duck it this time. I assure you I'm get a little extra on there. Um, Gus, Gus, by all the Gus is primed in Death Guard green in parts. Um, I will do this at some points alongside that when this needs a stage to rest. I don't think I'm going to have to touch this guy tonight. But when this guy's done, I have a combat patrol. Awesome. My last model. Be a big moment. I can go down to my local store, do a pickup game with someone I've never met before. Absolutely stumble over the rules. Forget whole things. Have a good time. Play with... Easier rule set for combat patrol so I don't have to shuffle through 80 pages of stuff. Get my sea legs under me. 
and have a good time. And once again, I can get a little bit close to these skulls. I don't have to be too ginger. You're going to get a pretty solid coat of white. Um, but I also don't want to be too sloppy because they are benefiting from a decent amount of that primer color shift. Color change, not really a shift. So. how these streams go live, but it keeps warning me that my bit rate's low. I hope the experience on your end isn't horrifyingly bad. I trust one of you would tell me so. I may have to go back and look at the software I'm using and make sure I have it configured right. I'll go back and watch the videos after. They look okay. You never can tell. They're probably all terrible. I'll probably watch like the first 12 seconds and then the Bitrate gets bad and everyone bounces. It's okay. Alrighty. Get some more paint on there. Thin it out a little bit. Making good progress. That's still a little thick. Easy there, buddy. And if you do lay on some paint that's too thick, like don't bug out. Thin your brush. Just dip it in the water. Uh, and then you can just go and sort of pick some of that paint up. Go back and pick it up. Move it somewhere else now that the brush is wet. It'll thin out. The only time you're really doomed with thick paint is when you hit it with it and walk away. If you're being cognizant of what you're doing the whole time, you can fix most awkward moments pretty quickly. You know, if, if you're paying as much attention as when you put a wash on where you're just like dabbing something in and seeing where it goes and trying to pay attention to not having too much pooling, if you're paying that much attention, you're good to go with your bases. It can be a little thick and then you can just sort of go back and move them around. The main thing is to just be mindful that the paint is kind of like a living thing. It's, it's gonna do stuff. You're not using a marker for a reason. Unless you are using a marker and you're using it for a reason. But I don't use markers. I don't think it would be a problem if someone did. I've thought about it at several points. I sometimes use an old, really jacked up, stuck together brush. It functions more like a marker. Um, but I can live with myself after doing that. There we go. Get that all underneath. All up in there. I think this thing's going to look super rad on the table. I think it's going to be a little bit vexing. I don't think it got any stat changes with the recent updates. And it didn't get any points changes. They were like, oh man, we like the Death Guard needs massive point changes. But this thing that no one's going to use, this thing's just fine. Feels like the kind of thing where like somebody at Games Workshop has found some strategy no one's ever thought of for this thing. And they're just like, yeah, we're going to leave that like 155 points or something. Like, Ooh, okay. It is pretty tough for a piece of pottery. It does provide, I think, cover. It blocks any part of line of sight, which is pretty cool. I'm going to need. Um, and my army is slow as all heck. I'm running low on this. I should give it a shake. That's what I should do is give it a shake. This guy might need a little bit of water in the actual pot. I'm not going to do that tonight, but I think I went through a lot of rack hearth flesh on my pox walkers. So this may be the first pot that I that I get through. It's not darn by any stretch, but it's uh, it's pretty thick in the bottom. Your paint also gets thicker in the pot if you don't shake it enough every time because you're just pulling the thinner stuff off the top. Not that I'm guilty of that, but I am. Um, you do have to shake pretty aggressively. And speaking of shaking, when you prime with a shaker can, a rattle can of uh, Wraithbone. 
shake the living daylights out of it. Just trust me, do it. Unless you're trying to kick it on on purpose. I spent like a solid minute just shaking outside. And it was, let me give this a shake right now. It was important. Very important. Take my hand off of the desk while I shake my paint so I don't shake the camera. I'm learning. That's good and shook. That's so soupy. I sort of laughed when I would see videos of someone has a little desktop pot shaker. I'm kind of like, you know what? I might have hated on that too soon. That seems like a pretty neat toy to have. Probably hella loud, but. Every once in a while, we give like give your paint pots an industrial shake. It's starting to sound interesting. All right, just getting around all these big glurgly burgly spots. Yeah, it's a cool color. I like it. I know that it's going to work nicely with my other consistent color of Warp Lock Bronze. And it'll show off Streaking Grime really, really well. Um, in fact, I may go so far as to actually Streaking Rust this one. If you look at all these metal bands, I'll be able to to get in there pretty aggressively with the streaky stuff and then when I hit it with the uh, whatchamacallit mineral? it's not mineral oil whatever the uh, solvent uh, it'll just come down and drips and on this model it's actually kind of cool because if it drips a lot it's going to come down almost like dripping wax and then it's got this spot and this spot all this edge around it kind of go to it's very few models that have a long tall tower to them uh, so I could use that to my advantage, or to the model's advantage, depending on how you think about it. Um, and let it get a really solid drip, and even if it goes drip, 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 and starts dripping down here, that'll be pretty cool. Death Guard Architecture 101. It's absolutely awesome to me that they get these structures that don't obey natural law. Every time Space Marines run into them, it's just like, man, this is a bad omen. This is a bad, bad omen. Like this stuff almost snubs its nose at anything orderly even making sense anywhere. Dried that off a little bit. There we go. Boils and boils and boils. Boils and goils. We are, we are zooming in. Making good progress. Good sloppy progress. Yeah, this model actually isn't too bad based and, and mostly put together. Um, to get into some into the crevices and spots. I was initially pretty wary, but I'm getting in there no problem. Sorry for that squeaking sound. It's bothering me too. It happens when you paint blind, paint behind corners. Just get some more of this up here. Yeah. The other thing you want to keep in mind when you're using very light colors is they quite often uh, they allude to some other color. So Rackarth Flesh, you know, definitely has some amount of red in it. It's not pink, it's not pink at all, but it sort of harkens to red. Um, and they've got a little maybe yellow in it. Sometimes you can actually just leave the paint out to uh, to sort of simmer. Like Rack White, this is a dry. It looks like it's got a little pink in it. Um, I have some Xandry dust. That goes much more yellow. 
Um, and I, I don't know if and or how I'm going to use it, but I could see it being an interesting sort of contrast. So maybe dry brushing with it somewhere. Uh, maybe not. Um, but then as I go into Bugman's Glow and Gilliman Flesh, those both go in that sort of red territory too. So hopefully they all kind of play nicely with each other. I do run the risk of the model being boring because they're all in the same like over is it over complimentary i don't know but if you go onto like probably on adobe's website or if you're just in photoshop like you can just bring up palettes of colors that naturally go well together and there's a decent amount of science decent amount of complete amount of science behind it and you don't have to be that good at it because i'm not to just sort of understand it um Getting a few things in the same sort of spectrum. Like you might use three out of five of these colors on the same business card, and then you'd want your white to sort of be like complementary to that. And if you did that, you'd have something that looked pretty regal, uh, pretty formal, because it's all staying in a reasonably tight band of color. But if you wanted something that popped and had contrast, you'd pick maybe two of these, and then maybe two colors that were like posing it on the color wheel. Basically magic the gathering. That's how you match colors. Um, and so why don't you keep those things in mind? You have a decent amount of latitude, but if you ever look at one of your models and you're like, oh, this thing is kind of boring, and I have done that. Um, even knowing what I'm describing right now, it's not like I looked that up recently. Um, you know, I started out being pretty cowardly and still am, relatively speaking, with colors. Um, so you sort of get yourself in a rut where you're like, uh, it feels like something's missing on this model. And it's like, yeah, the interesting part. And it takes, it takes kind of, I don't know, I think it's exactly take great courage, but I like these guys to look pretty serious. They've got little lords, you know, nerglings, to bring some comic relief. I want these guys to look like fierce villains, and a lot of times that means I go a little easy on the color. But I have learned to sort of use color theory a bit. When I do put some in, it kind of stands out. But as I look a lot closer I need to hit that and every I can I can be a little lazy stuff around there is gonna get metallics it's interesting because most of this thing is like at least in the case of I'm painting it's gonna be like flesh color then metallics um, which is very forgiving very forgiving provided you do it in that order if I screw something up with the metallics and have to go back and do some flesh color stuff I'm going to regret it I'll deal with it, but that part would not be fun. Flesh over metallics. I'm imagining not good. You never want to get yourself in that infinite loop, which happens with Mephiston Red. You're like, well, paint Mephiston Red next to metal. Now I'm painting metal next to Mephiston Red because I went over a little bit. I'm going back now I'm doing it again all right that's a pretty cool uh, pottery base color set this guy down for a second give my brush a little swish and then I'm gonna grab some Bugman's glow and we'll hit some of the gutsier parts of this I do like the feeling now that I'm in this as much as the space that I'm in right now is a little bit cramped um, relative to the space behind me where I do the sort of pre-recorded stuff that I'll be over later. Um, I have to just kind of come over here and bring the few pieces that I plan to use. I'll bring like five paints because I'm not going all the way around the world with it. Bring a few brushes. I can always walk back over there, but the process of being done uh, constructing and I put most of my construction stuff back there, put the glue back there, put most of the scrapey things back there pull over five paints, I get to like re-clean this space pretty consistently. Um, and that feels pretty good. Feels fresh and new. Ah, good tea. 
good tea. So I'm gonna let this dry, not a ton. Like I, it's, it's not even really tacky, uh, but I'm just gonna give it a second um, just so it'll be easier to handle. I, I don't wanna put any fingerprints on it. Um, as much as I don't paint quickly, I sure as heck don't pause a lot and, uh, <laughs> and wait for things to catch up. I should do that more often. So I wonder, 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 wonder. <sighs> My fingers. With these weird tubey things, I'm almost certainly going to hit them with Gilliman Flesh, which is a contrast paint. In theory, I could, could mind you, um, dry brush them first with Rac White and get a little, little bit of extra oomph before doing so. Oh, what's going on over here? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to check a couple more spots. Yeah, let's go on to some Bugman's Glow. I think I probably will do that. I could dry brush all this and those first and then contrast over it on this side. I'm curious to see how Gilliman Flesh looks used properly um, because I'm pretty sure I've never actually used it as a contrast paint. I'm actually very like, earlier than novice with contrast paints. Um, I've never done them right. I just use them as paints that are thin. Um, but the more I read about them, they sound interesting. I don't think I, I'm too new to have a stance on the methods, but like, obviously you go on games workshop, I think it even shows up on Amazon. Like they show you, Hey, you could use the traditional method or you could use the contrast method. And I came to the game a little too late when contrast paints came out, but they seem neat. Um, the catch is, the more I read into the history of how it came about, was uh, you know a bunch of people with gray models just like not catching up for painting, and that's why <clears throat> speed painting was like becoming all the rage. And I respect all that, and that's cool. I just don't do it. I'm like slow and cranky, and uh, I'm not good at the game yet, and I don't have like eight armies to paint. For me, it's like. This is relaxation time, so why would I speed it up? Now, as I stare down the barrel of needing to do 14 more Plague Marines, all my grand virtue may fail, and I may try to find a way to do them quickly. But I hope I don't. I don't want to rush this. That is what I mean. I don't want to rush. I'd rather have a good time doing it. And have it take longer. I don't want to rush. I do like Bugman's Glow a lot. It's a really cool paint. I'm just gonna take my time in here. Push the brush in a little bit. There's an interesting amount of texture where almost all of the, with the exception of these really metallic tubes, the gutsy tubes all get a replaced replaced recessed place to glue into there's a decent amount of care and concern you want to take around the edges because you could very easily just slip the side and then paint over the pottery part which I don't feel like doing it is a survivable offense I just don't want to. Do I have a light up here? I do. So much light up here. Put that behind my head so I can see a little bit better. Does that even help you guys see better? I wonder. Yeah, that doesn't hurt. I'll just try to get it out of camera shot here. Gently. There we go. Much better. I'll hit my head on that when I get up next time. You watch. All right. So. Keep going around this with Bugman's. All these gutsy parts. And they all are like ribbed like an earthworm. So when those get a contrast paint, it'll look pretty darn disgusting. 
right on point. Okay, and yeah, the other ones are behind. Now I gotta be careful where I grab this from. There we go. Hit these guys with a two. Gutsy, gutsy, gutsy. A little bit of water to thin it out. And away we go. I'm not too worried if I hit these drips because whatever I go over them, go over with on them, is going to probably be pretty bright and shiny or excessively green. Um, so even if I have to hit it with a couple coats, like I'm not worried about this Bugman's getting through. I hope. Never models an adventure. Oh yeah, this absolutely looks like these bulges in here look like a snake. You ever see like one of those videos of a snake eating an egg, just like gorging it down like a champ? Tool video. Just like a bunch of meat sausage going through a pipe. Good, good times. Yeah. It's okay if every once in a while you dab a Q-tip in some water and just pinch. Sneak into some little nook or cranny that you overstepped your bounds on. That's not going to be all that visible. You go back in and just tune it up. Tune it up. All right. So I've gotten around that from about all the angles that I can see. As soon as I say that out loud, I'm sneaking back in. All right. So I think these guys will be metallic because they don't look gutsy. But inside here, I've got all these piles of really awesome guts. And it's a mixture of that. There's like the... Uh, Compressible tubing, that'll be metallic, but then there's all this like gorgeous meaty sort of organelli stuff. And then I get Bugman's glow. And once again, I'm doing this first because the stuff around it's going to be metallic and it should hide any sort of oversteps that happen. Um, these bands. Honestly, these bands will probably be lead belcher or some silvery thing with a bunch of black wash on them. I've got to decide what I'm doing with the spikes, but all of these arrow type things, those will be bronze and almost nothing is getting through that bronze. I'll probably put that bronze over like yellow and it wouldn't show anything through. But yeah, it looks comically almost childish right now it just never looks good at this step a child putting on makeup where it's just like even if you get thin you really have to have an amazing amount of faith that the subsequent steps are going to heal everything up if you don't have that faith it's demoralizing On lipstick. Uh, yeah, this one pipe might have been the only thing that I probably could have left off as a part, but at the end of the day, that Bugmans will get in there, and it's a weird spot. That one's a little tough to navigate. Whatever I use for wash will get in there. Uh, speaking of contrast, I may actually use a green wash on some of this stuff. I know it sounds a little creepy, um, but it will contrast nicely. It will contrast thoroughly. I don't know if it will contrast nicely. I have no idea. That is me overhyping. Um, 
I legit have no idea if it'll look nice. But it seems to make sense to me. All right, more gutsy stuff. In underneath here, make sure the glass is scooched up. Yeah, and just sneak in there. One more. I think I'm being too cavalier with this. I do have some like primary color washes, at least like red and blue. And I think there's some, it's not primary, but green that I have from some Viejo set. I should really experiment with that. There we go. There we go. I think, and I'll spin this around to make sure that I'm staying true. Yep, still a little bit more guts over here. Fun model, full of gutsy business, metal tubes, eventually smoke. Do want to figure a way out to make this thing actually smoke someday, or one of them. I'll probably have to make a new one. Um, that would be a fun project to have this thing go toot toot. A little button on the side while you're playing. Wait till like turn three. Tap the button. Fun stuff. I can't get the idea of fog machines out of my head with Halloween coming. All right. So. I have this rack white. And... I don't think I've ever used it. Oh yeah, it's just bonking around inside. Oh yeah, so it's like, it's thick like paste. It's basically like um, Rise of Rust. Uh, which I'm guessing all of the dry brushing stuff from Citadel is just like thick glop. Um, but I'm going to hit all of this stuff that I got before with the uh, blah, 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 Rack Art Flesh. Is that side better? That side better. This side's probably dope. Oh, look at that. Oh, thick glop. A decent amount on there. Here we go. Plink, 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 plink. All right. Okay. So, what this is going to do is. really has like a, a clay pottery texture to it. I am hoping it does some enhancement of that. It really does. I mean, that white is very strong on the edge. I don't really have to worry about hitting this metal. I don't know why I'm avoiding it. This thing hasn't even touched metallics yet. I need to get a much gentler touch with my dry brushing. I don't need to. I should. Yeah, but this is, yeah, that's cool. I'll make it pop a little bit more. And then the grand experiment will be is I'll hit these guys, dry brush the daylights out of them, then hit them with some, some gillum and flesh and see, see what we see. And if I like how that looks, I may use a little on here too. I doubt it though. I don't think I'm going to go that far. But this is all kind of... Weird experimental area for me. I got paints. I want to learn to use them. And if I use the same six colors all the time, I never learn anything new. So. Weird, weird, weird. I think I need to get some more paint on this thing. So what I've definitely found with dry brushing, and I have a long way to go with this, but I used to just barely dab the end of it and then like very gingerly sort of swirl this thing around. That doesn't help. And I don't know, I don't understand why this is, but you really want to get it like into the brush. Um, 
And it's more than just like wiping the thing off at the end. Like you really want to get like, you grab a lot of paint, especially with a dry brush this size. And I, I wish I understood why that was. That's a little heavy, but um, you don't just want it on the tips. You really want it to be like driven into the brush, which obviously then makes cleaning it pretty dope later on. By dope, I mean not fun. It just works better that way. I think I saw some video talking about it and I was like, I don't believe that. And then I tried it and I was like, ooh, this is the brush good. I'm doing this pretty heavy, heavy handed. I'm certainly not great yet at figuring out how much paint to get on there. But this is still essentially part of the early base coating. And it's a miasmic malignifier. And I learned by doing, the longer I sit here dry brushing and cursing my lack of ability with it, the better. So here's the thing I don't get. I feel like there's too much paint on the brush until immediately there's not enough. It always, it's like never quite in the middle. Man, this is really too much. And then I like paint for a little bit, move over to the paper towel, and then it's like poof, gone. And it's neat. I think the thing is it's not gone. I think I just do it so heavy handed at the start. And I have no restraint. Yeah, now it's starting to look more like makeup because I've worn enough of this off of here. I think I'm just too eager. I want to see the effect like immediately and there's probably enough paint on this brush to do like the whole model dry brush. And I'm just, I gotta learn some restraint. Old dog. New tricks. It does look cool though. Like it absolutely, I, don't, I think the closer I get to this camera, it might get blurry. It is. It's, you want me to focus on the fly? That's a terrible idea. It's a terrible idea. Yeah, it's not even going to work. There you go. You can sort of see it. Oh, best laid plans of mice and men. I think speed and reps matter a lot with dry brushing. That knocking sound is obviously because I don't have a really clear shot of this. Maybe that's it. I don't know. I've seen, I've watched people do it and then they have this like really good like doo -doo 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 thing and maybe, maybe I'm just gripping everything too hard. Like Chris Farley when he's like grabbing the roll and he, I love it, I cuddle it and then I destroy it. Yeah, I think, I think what I need to do is have the patience to do more reps. It's reps that make it work. I'm getting there. Gentle. Super careful with this guy. So many spikes. A little more, a little dab. with it like I'm probably doing it more correct right now and it feels like it's not going fast enough love this stuff though love it in there. I'll stretch out. It's been a long week. A long week. I should put the lid on this tier. It's going to get cold. It's been a good week though. Work has been good. Family's been good. Health has been good. Just really busy.
let's keep dry brushing. I am going to hit, I'll hit this guy. It's a pretty strong dry brushing. I think I'm going to try, let me get that in the shot, buddy. Oh, yeah, that's way too strong. <laughs> I want this weird sort of textural, I'm not looking for a crazy dry brushing effect on this, but I need to hit enough of it thick enough. So I'm going to see how Gillen and Flesh looks on it, and if I hate it, I doubt I will because I don't really hate anything. If I hate it, then I'll, uh, then I'll go back into Rackarth Flesh territory. But I have a contrast paint, and I kind of like to use it like one. Instead of my normal shenanigans, your metal. You don't get this treatment. Yeah, I'm definitely more is it stippling, dappling, stippling than I am dry brushing this thing. But yeah, now it's got a bunch of texture on it. And the reason I picked this one is it doesn't have too much crazy metalness around it. I think I can get, yeah, I can approach basically every angle of it. Get in there. Set this guy aside for now. I don't think this stuff ever really dries out fast, but I'm going to try Gilliman flesh. Basically pulling out all the flesh colors that I've got. I should probably get some Nurgle's Rot. I imagine I will use some Nurgle's Rot. Lots of boils to pop. All right. I'm not saying I've never used contrast paint. I've just never used it how it's intended. My understanding of it is that if you have an undercoat that has a decent amount of texture in it, you just sort of glop the stuff on and let it go in to the spots it needs to go into. So we're going to find out. Because I'm going to hit this thing with it. And see where it goes. I think I would have let that paint dry a little bit, but I didn't. All right, so this is, I always wondered why Gilman flesh looked so dark, it's because it's gonna spread out like crazy. If you don't let it pool, it looks kind of like decently tan skin. That's starting to make a lot more sense. My experience in the past has been to just glop this stuff on somewhere and that's, I feel like I'm using it more correctly now, which is good. All right, that makes sense. If I have a bunch of white there, if I dry brush this thing like crazy, it's not complete nonsense paint. Hmm. If I'm going to do that and I'm going to like it, I'm actually going to take it off right now. I don't normally go like that, but... I am going to just thin it and take it off. I am going to use it, but I want its base to be rock hard flesh. That's what I want. So I can go back and I can keep dry brushing with rack white. I'll just dry brush these guys heavily. Doesn't need a full coat, does it? Does it? does. Um, go back, rack our flesh these guys as well. And I do want them to stand out from the main smokestack, but they will by virtue of the fact that I will hit them with Gilliman. Hit you over the head with that Gilliman. I discussed my call it a painting method because I don't have a method. Um, my MO, modus operandi is probably a better term with a friend of mine who's been painting for years and he's like, so how do you decide all your things that you're gonna, what colors you're gonna use ahead of time? And I was like, well, I pick some because they look pretty and then I start painting and then eventually I settle on something. And he's like, don't you screw up? And I was like, yes, it's true that I do. That's a pretty cool adventure. Yeah, these guys are going to be happy. 
So these guys will still need to dry. I can still sneak in and and wrap white um, as intended. Stuff that is dry. Oh, you're a good gloppy paint. Make sure this is nice and mixed with some water. And then these side tubes will stand out because they'll get that that Gilligan flesh. Still do need to build, I think I promised myself at some point I'd build a necklace for my night tyrant. Be a piece of chain. Do it up kind of corroded. Put something fun on the end. I gotta figure out what's gonna go on the end of it. I'm thinking maybe like a bronze version of very famous character's head or something like that. Just a total yeehaw fear inducing necklace. I thought about a bunch of uh, Imperial Guard heads hanging from a necklace. Maybe bronze them. Maybe not. These are the things I think about. Not too happy about the seams on these guys. I could have done a better job there. Could have. Should have, would have. I probably should have just held them for longer. I knew on a lot of these big pieces that the seams would be an issue. And I did, I did actually on this one. I did throw a decent chunk of glue in there and held it in the hopes that it would seal that seam, but it didn't. I'll just have to abuse how much paint I use. There you go. It's like a college apartment. You got a little crack in the wall, just eight times as much paint will solve any problem. Alrighty. Yep, all the way around this guy. I swear, I don't plan on using this thing because I'm going to troll with it. I don't think you really can. But I think tactically and strategically, being able to place something, not anywhere on the map, but almost anywhere, that someone has to deal with, that is definitely not your intent of like, I can't run around and capture anything with this. It does make, it does make a whole section of the map kind of annoying, not annoying, painful to deal with being able to sneak my guys forward a little bit of cover sounds fun see i haven't actually looked at the sheet for this guy in a while but like it's got an aura and i think it technically has a ranged attack that is just like it's smoke it's miasma more appropriately but it does count having the the nurgle aura to it Feels like I should be able to do something smart with it. Like no matter how a table is set up, there should be places where I can cut off a sight line so that if I do take an objective, it's not easily shot at from a specific angle. It feels like Feels like the thing that I justify 50 times and then use 20 times and realize it was probably not the best idea. But I got it in my head that it was, which is cool. I do that. Problem is I like an underdog. And this model as a weapon of war is absolutely an underdog. And it's so, so lore appropriate. How could I say no? There we go. Right in there. Look at you. Yeah, that's a good call. 
Good call, Ripley. A good call. I like that. Still got the primer showing through, which is nice. It's not all just totally flat. Look all the way around it. Always check all your sides. Say that to you. Do as I say, not as I do. There we go. And then one last little tube. And I can leave those sides to dry while the tubes to dry while I hit the rest of this thing. Dab of water. And those rings do not have taller pieces, which is good. So I just get around this as I flick paint on my Cintiq. Danger, danger, Will Robinson. Be gentle. One of the things I continuously work on is like really getting a feel for what the end of the brush is doing. This took me a long time to even start to think about. Because if you're not used to using paint brushes, you kind of try to use them like, like you have to imagine like Huck Finn whitewashing a fence where you're flicking it, or you're just sort of like stabbing at it. And the thing really does, you realize, maybe some people quicker than me, there's a reason why a brush is shaped the way it is. And there's a reason why um, you know, you're not using a magic marker because the brush holds paint a certain way and it reacts to pressure and movement a certain way. And I still don't get it, but I can, I can see when a certain brush stroke is right. I can see when a certain one is wrong. And I don't mean right and wrong in the ethical sense. I mean, where the end of the brush does the thing that I thought it was going to do based on how I moved or where it doesn't. And that's a lot to learn. I used to hate tiny brushes. Now I actually like them a lot. I used to detest them the first, all the way up through the Fox Walkers. I really struggled with tiny brushes because the end of them just like wiggles around. Like any amount of pressure. The fact of the matter is, you almost need none. You really just have to have faith that the paint's just going to leap off the brush if it makes any contact whatsoever. And you have to tap super lightly with those tiny brushes, but it does work. All right, so those are good. Wash this guy down again. You're getting some good duty, whatever your name is, Alex Two. Two brush, it's a rare occasion that I get to use one. All right, so I'll keep dusting this guy down with rack white. It very much looks like, like chalk dust on it. Yoink, dear, extra little bit sticking out. Yeah, this brush is getting nice and seasoned. Yeah, you go make up brush. I have to avoid those. <laughs> like the plague. Because they are wet. What I'll do is I'll just hold the model down like this. And... You'll rue the day when I actually get good at dry brushing. You'll rue the day, I say. It does pick up sharp corners really, really nicely. Here, over here. Hope I don't need to grab a smaller one. That is not dry brushing 101, what I just did. I just jammed it in there. Even 12 year old took, took the reins for a second. That does work. It's fine. This is not a competition model. I'm not trying to limit myself when I say stuff like that. I'm just trying to be a little bit pragmatic. I want to learn to get better, but I don't want to stall myself 
freaking out about how good I am today versus how much gooder I could be. Do this as a form of craft fun. I post videos for you guys for the same reason. And hopefully find other folks that are good at this stuff or not good at it. I'd like to watch someone kind of meander their way through with the best of intents. I don't know if that's a good idea to use the back of my hand. But it seems like it. Seems like an all right idea. Yeah, that first coat phew, right into primer time. Very helpful. You can't get away with that all the time, but that first coat, especially with like a double prime like this, dry that thing right away. Mm -mm -mm. Dry brush by spinning. That doesn't work. You already knew that. Dry, dry, dry enough. All right, more over here. Oh my God, I vastly overdid it there. <laughs> got caught and went mm -hmm. I need a smaller dry brush for that spot all right so now I'm seeing another reason why you might want to leave your some parts apart it is easier to dry brush things for sure I still routinely think about how much space do I have with a tiny little like needle of a brush I was like oh, I can go in there and paint that you can't do that <laughs> yeah, it's a good lesson. Good lesson. Poor dry brush. Things I've done to you. All right. You dry enough? You are dry enough. Yeah, now when I go over this with some of that. Gilly Gilly Gilliman. It'll look really jacked up in a good way. It'll look Death Guard jacked up. Yeah, that's working. Brush going kind of quick. I might, depending on how this looks on the side, the whole thing might be getting the Gilman treatment. There we go. Yeah. This obviously, I've, as I found out with a huge amount of that Night Tyrant, this works awesome for metal. I think the question that I asked was like, oh, this would probably be... What technique would you do? Yeah, I was talking about rattler cans. And uh like, yeah, there's gotta be. I should maybe I should have primed this thing in silver. Lead belcher. Someone chimed in. Prime it in black. Dry brush it in lead belcher. It's a revelation. Revelation how cool it was and how fast it was. Does feel like makeup work. Get some rouge on there. All right, with this pretty close, I can sort of do a scan around the model, find a couple little spots where maybe I didn't dry brush so well. But I'm gonna hit these side stacks, these fat stacks. 
with some Gilliman flesh. And now we will see if it's buried at Miller's Crossing. Because if it looks good on these, keep it on those no matter what. If it looks good on these, the whole thing's going to get it. That's a scary prospect. For sure. Learning as we go. What brush did I use? I think I used this one. Yeah, I mean, it feels at least a little bit wet. Yeah, it is. All right, sip of tea. Stretch the neck. Time, oh nice. Yeah, I did start a little early today, that's good. The old quick puff for science. Can I use a big brush? I can use a big brush on contrast paint, can't I? That's legal. All right. There we go. There we go, Gilliman Flesh. You might make all the difference in the world. Theoretical supposed to be used for a Boutte Gilliman. Practical, it's a nice color for a Death Guard Plague Furnace Miasmic Malignifier. True story. And I think this is going to be really nice. Yeah. Um, when those boils get done, they're going to be getting done in something light cream or yellow or green or absolute snot like Nurgle's Rot. That'll go nicely with this. It'll be shiny if I use Nurgle's Rot. Disgustingly shiny. Yeah, I am digging this. You might be the whole model. See that? Pretty nice. Contrast paint. Intentional. This is neat. And now I see uh, how contrast paint could speed things up if you get that base down. I mean, in theory, you could just do this over primer. I don't, I feel like I'd be cheating myself if I did it that quick. I don't know if that's like old school Catholic guilt or something. I don't think I'd be satisfied if I, I don't think I'd be satisfied if I painted small models like this. I'm not going to lie to you. This model, pretty happy with it. I don't know. I just feel really weird about like something as tiny as like the shoulder pad pauldrony thing. Am I supposed to hang out with that a little bit longer? I don't know. You do you. Folks who like the contrast method, I, can, I think I can see why now. It has a lot of attractive qualities to it. It is neat. It's funny, like as much as I don't want to speed paint, I watch tons of speed painting videos. Um, not the informative ones, really. I mean, obviously they're all informative, but like not the ones of like, how do you speed paint? I'm not doing it. Um, but some people do like some pretty interesting marathon sessions. Like I think the, where was it from? British dude, midwinter minis guy, I think did like a 24 hour thing with a buddy of his, where they just like marathon painted. And the dude, if it wasn't, if I'm thinking of the right guy, just painted an obscene number of models. Uh, that guy's fast, and he has a lot of techniques that he's worked out over time that do things really fast. And you can still, even if you're not going to go fast, you can sort of learn while you're watching them about little spots. It's like Bill Gates was like, find someone, uh, trying to find a really good worker, find someone who's going to like, find someone lazy, because they'll find ways to simplify the job. I'm not saying that this dude's lazy, but a lot of those time-saving techniques are educational because they teach you about how something works. 
more so than just using it right out of the box. Like someone has innovated some part of a process with it. And that understanding goes a long way. I feel the same way about kit bashing. Like I'm not going to do a ton of it, but I definitely want to learn how to do it enough so that I have a better understanding of just putting models together in general. Oh, that. <laughs> Getting one of these hooks under the top of that pot. That's Danger Will Robinson. That would have been funny if I just spilled all that Gilman flesh out. I was going to use you. Scramble. All right, so watch this. New button. I'm going to click it. Set this down. Should I spell it right? Yeah, two L's. Can I not hit yes on this? I think the answer is going to be yes. Bonk. <laughs> it's a new button, so I clicked it. Uh, I'm going to gill them and flesh the entire thing. If I can manage to not put my hands on the parts that are wet. I like how that looks a lot. It is significantly... Here's the big question. It is significantly darker than what's on the box, and I'm not a disciple of what's on the box by any stretch. It's significantly redder. And I was originally like, if I went that light, I could hit it with like a rust. But now I think I'm talking like dark grime. I might be talking the super dark grime that they got on this. That may be the way to go. All right, well. Gilliman, the flesh is happening. That is really cool looking. It's very Pueblo-like. That redness to it is pretty cool. Oh, that's a lot easy there, buddy. Curb your enthusiasm. So what I'm liking more and more about it is that It'll allow me to use greens more aggressively um, to contrast. So the glop that comes out of the weird intestinal things, that could be like a bright, shiny green, and it really pop against this. And then against the rest of my army, <laughs> I put my completely glum. <laughs> um, my Eeyore army, it'll, I think it'll work well there too. Poor guys, I'll get you some more colors someday. A really awesome picture on Reddit. This had to be like three months ago, maybe more. It's probably been actually before I started painting. Uh, someone did pox walkers. It just did a small set, like six or seven. But they all look like they had uh, tourist clothing on, so it was like Hawaiian shirts and all sorts of neon colors. It was really awesome. I love it. It's amazing the sense of humor some. Warhammer heads have a video somewhere where like I think some guy I don't remember if he was if it was an orc army I don't remember what what faction it was but everything was done up all like Christmas style they had like some form of tank and it looked like a Santa's sleigh like you go man you go have fun That's popping. That is popping. I will have to figure out if I'm using too much of this stuff. It is welling a little bit. I'm presuming you don't want it to well, so I'll just go in there and grab some and 
Actually dry the brush a little bit. A little absorbent. Yeah, and then you just lay it in there and go yoink, mine. Now, thankfully this is not some snazzy Space Marine army thing. This is supposed to be gross. We're gonna give you gross. So we clump up a little, but don't be lazy. Um, if you mean to dip the entire model, then by all means do it. But if you don't, just be honest with yourself and pay attention. There we go. Look at that. Well, I didn't expect that this is where the model was going to go, but I like it. Cool color, cool effect. You can see just like how much texture is going on with it. I'm not sure. I'm not sure I'm ever going to really use Gillum and Flesh as like some normal guy's skin. <laughs> but I'm going to use it a lot for stuff like this. Panicles, pustules. That is a fun paint. You know what? I think I finally found. I think I finally found that I like contrast paint. This is a hoot. It does take prep work. That is for sure. I think a lot of times that I used it, it just happened to be. Not that I have a zillion colors right now. I don't have one of those setups where someone's like, oh my God, there's like 3,000 um, color, color pots behind you. But when I first started and I didn't know the difference between anything, uh, I was using technical paints like they were regular paints. Um, oh, that's right, like way long ago, I just dumped out a huge amount of whatchamacallit stuff. Uh, the mega green, neon green stuff. Just tried to dump it onto my palette as if I was going to paint with it. I didn't know any better. That was fun. I just used contrast paint as a color and wondered why it was so difficult to use. Just wasn't doing it right. Still works. I've absolutely mixed contrast paints with base paints just to modulate color a little bit. That works fine. I got contrast medium lying around. What for? I think I've only used it for glitter. But I got it. That's heavy. I'll just move this around. That is real heavy, buddy. That looks brown. Yes, you're never at the risk of like truly you can lay a decent amount in there but it, yeah it does like a wash it like pulls and rolls off you got to be a little careful that's pretty hefty there we go yeah it's like borderline it looks like there's a decent amount of clay in this thing now that's what it looks like Got that reddish, ruddy clay thing. Any amount of yellow, green, pea green, baby green, baby poop green that gets added to this is just going to sing now because of this backdrop. Get him, Death Guard. Dab in there. Get into the nooks and crannies. I'm a little shocked that I've managed to hold back and not go immediately into metallics. I have to outwit myself with some of how I paint. Coming over to this space separately from back there. I didn't bring any with me and it's a short walk back there to grab some. And obviously the more I talk about it, the more likely it is I'm going to do it. But I've managed to restrain myself. Managed to restrain myself. All right, let me tilt this this away. I mean, that does just look straight up cooler. So 
another sort of side benefit I'm seeing of using a contrast paint like this in this sort of big sort of sweeping sections, especially for Death Guard because they get a lot of flies, is that I'm not, I'm really, really not losing any of that raised texture from the flies right now. I'm going to have to paint over them in something at some point, and I found with Typhus, definitely. Um, some of the bugs on him, kind of hard to spot after you've gone over with a couple of like, you know, not crazy thick, but even watered down paints. You can sort of lose some of that detail, especially if you're like not a young whipper snapper. Whereas contrast is very much it's like just thicker than a wash. It's like a wash with something else in it. Um, I can see those flies are in fact easier for me to see now. I mean, you can see that as I look in the camera. Yeah, like you can spot all those flies now. Where with a sort of matte finish paint, they can be tough to come by. You can end up going over them a couple times and then losing them completely. That's an interesting byproduct of this. In fact, when I was painting Typhus, I ended up hitting all of the Destroyer Hive on the back. I did hit it. I hit it with a black wash right out the gate because I, I couldn't see any of the details while I was painting. I just needed to get them to rise up a little bit. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Just clean that guy a little bit. Take a second. Take a sip. This thing is so metal. I love it. So very metal. I like lead belcher, but I gotta find a way to get it to darken it up a bit. I'm curious if I could just drop like a drop of Viejo black wash into lead belcher get something closer to like a or like black iron something to work on something to think about all the silvers brasses bronzes golds they're all really solid paints I find from Citadel. I like them a lot. They're some of my favorites. But like getting a black iron, wrought iron look, I don't know how to do that. I just know how to take steel and make it look greasy and a little bit weathered. I do spend a lot of time weathering stuff. All about change and transition. Scoot you in there a little bit. Scoot you in there a little bit. Scoot you in there a little bit. And just dab this with a Q-tip and it'll be fine. It is fine. It's so totally fine. It can get all the way under there. That's nice. Still going. All the way under there. This brush is going to be so sad. You're you're driving so far, brush. Big honking brush. You're being put through the works. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Not bad for a first try. But anyway, back to speed painting techniques. Um, I learned a lot about, I mean, relatively speaking, because I don't know Jack, but I learned a lot about basing from watching people talk about 
And I'm certainly a victim of this. Like, my Plague Marines still aren't properly based. My Typhus, in fact, has, like, fun fiddly bits on them. I just didn't put any actual material on there. I know everybody sort of suffers. It was a big project to me to actually put material on all my pox walkers. Um, when I say I learned a lot, it's like I know it's a problem for people to go back and base all their stuff. Not universally, but some people just don't um, for a while. And so when you learn from someone who like knows that and is planning on speed painting to just get an army on the table, a lot of the techniques that they use can be pretty sharp. Like just mixing together a batch of essentially Elm Elmer's glue and water and just brushing over a ton of them and then hitting them with different kinds of sand that you either find in the street or your backyard or doing some stuff with dirt because um, you're really working on, on the cheap. Um, you get a better understanding of what like their full range of options are by someone who's trying to get through something quick. That looks very brushly, but... I'm just going to cope. I'm just going to cope. Now I'm painting the side of a house, really. No, I'm not. I'm not painting the side of a house. I'm painting a model, buddy. No biggie. Just a little bit of dabbing in there because I got thick. Boop. There you go, buddy. Yeah, you're feeling a little more healthy now. I guess it's antithetical to a proper Death Guard model, but I think you get the point all the way around this and once again like yeah I'm going pretty quick but there's going to be so much metallics done around this that's what's going to actually crisp the edges up and this being me it won't crisp them up that much but I don't have to I don't have to hem and haw over this step all that much There we go. And this gets under there pretty nicely. If it drips a bit, that's cool. Scooch my glasses up. There we go. Don't forget it into all these little spots. I'm looking forward to all these boils. They're gross. It's going to be a fun little round of. Probably Nurgle's Rot, I think, is good enough. Boogery enough looking. And it'll stand out really well. It'll, it'll serve to contrast very nicely. There we go. My most dreaded weapon in my army. Pottery Kiln. Want to complain about Death Guard movement in tents? My dread model of the movement is zero. Watch the Terminators go flying past it. Top speed. Screaming. I'll show you slow models. I'll show you. Look at you. Look at you, buddy. You are shaping up. Gilliman flesh, not just for Gillimans anymore. For infernal, chaos driven furniture, furnitures, furnaces, spread living plague across the battlefield. Yeah, you're looking happy. Put some in here. Just let it run its course. If it gets too gloppy, I've just been scooching it around a bit. Scooching and scooching. And much like a wash, it's getting into all the cracks, which is good, and making some stuff pop. Definitely gonna need to wash the daylights out of this, but what a what a revelation contrast paint is, even if you're sloppy. And that looks it's kind of neat, and it being this terracotta sort of thing, it, it works.
I think everything spiky. Did I ever mix? I didn't. Let's see what I did on the old plague burst crawler while I set this back here to dry a little bit. Let me give you a little, little wash there, guy. Oh, big brush. You've been you've been so patient. <laughs> Just sitting there getting worked. Set you aside. The old PBC. How did I handle you? I can't even tell. So I mean, obviously it's warp lock bronze on the band of this. And I did hit these guys a little bit of. Ow, that's still painful. A little bit of riser rust on top. Might not have even been riser. Might have been. I might have moved over to Viejo by by the time I got there. But yeah, some amount of bronze, some amount of room fang steel or lead belcher. It's tough because I want to use both, and I know I'm using something ferrous looking on the tubes. Maybe anything that isn't purely anything spiky will get warp lock bronze. Anything nubby. We'll get lead belcher. So this pipe, all lead belcher. This tube, lead belcher. These rings around here, lead belcher. This thing, lead belcher. This thing, lead belcher. Spiky, warp lock, warp lock, warp lock, warp lock. Big mega. Eldari spike looking things. Drukari? Drukari is the word I meant, right? Someone will correct me on that, I'm assuming. Not very strong with the space elves right now, though I'm getting to meet some of them in the Fulgrim book, uh, which continues uh, to pleasingly unfold. It's far more interesting than I thought it was going to be. Um, far more interesting. Watching the descent into madness. Watching how these different Primarchs get introduced to Chaos and just how much absolute hubris is involved um, and sort of like best laid plans of mice and men was very interesting. You know, Fulgrim was already pretty high on himself, uh, but for a while he was like, you know, but it's about being perfect. It's like aiming for perfection. So you hold yourself to this crazy high standard. As he starts bugging out over, over chaos, um, gets his hand on this weird sword and goes to this weird lair planet and gets, uh, gets exposed. All the virtuous parts of his argument just go out the window. It's gone. Um, all of it just down the toilet. And he just gets obsessed, sensory obsessed. Um, there's no music too loud or gaudy, no color bright enough, um, no smell deep enough, but he feels everything, but he gets addicted to it. That poor dude. He was kind of screwed up from the beginning. Like, him and Angron, just like, what do you do about it? Magnus can understand why it's complicated. Mortarian, I can understand it, even though I'm not a huge Mortarian fan. Angron, though, like his name's Angron. Like the Emperor even gets his hands on him at one point, has him anesthetized. I think it's in which book? Master of Man, I think. Um, I think it's Master of Man. Yeah, and he's got a Admech buddy with him. And he's like, Look at this dude I got on this table. He's like, It's Angron. He's like, Out cold. And they look at the, was the butcher's nails, what they're called, the spiky things in the back of their heads that make them only feel pleasure when they are excessively violent. And the Emperor knows how bad that thing is attached to his quote-unquote son. He's like, yeah, but if I try to do anything about it, I might kill him. So I'm just going to let him go and let him go do his thing. I don't know, maybe revolt? His name's Angron. Guy has no chill. Um, and the Emperor has arguments for why, like, you know, it's the human elements that, that make us able to surpass just AI someday. Simply being able to skip over whole sections of decision making through emotion 
But yeah, your, your boy's name's Angron, wears red all the time, has no chill. You had to have seen that coming. All right, I think, oh yeah, that is pretty damp. I think at this point, it's gonna be safe to call it a night. This contrast paint is not drying quickly. Um, I think tomorrow I should probably able, be able to handle the metallics. I'll probably handle the glop. I'm being very careful where I hold this thing. So any gloopy spots, Maybe the boils, the gloop and the boils. I should probably do the wash on all this stuff first. Maybe, we'll see. I might just do metallics tomorrow. That'll be fun, one of my favorite phases. Um, and it'll start to crisp up and I'll probably hit these skulls last. I still have to do all this base stuff. The metallics is a good chunk of work. I am gonna get one tiny, let's see how to hold this. One tiny little bit of red because there's that safety valve. Remember, if you're going to build some demonic, otherworldly, plague spewing furnace, if it's going to be OSHA compliant, it's got to have a pressure valve. Anyway, um, thanks a bunch for watching me muddle through this. I am pleased with where it's going. It looks kind of like a, a red clay sort of thing going, which will be cool. Uh, most likely tomorrow we'll sharpen it up with a lot of metallics and then probably a step after that we'll be putting on all the glop and snot and uh yeah and streaking grime over the whole thing rock and roll thanks a bunch have a good night bye bye and we'll see you maybe next time